Digimon the movie is easily one of my favorite guilty pleasures, a film from childhood that I consider a millennial classic, but did you know it had a direct sequel that a ton of kids who grew up with Digimon completely missed? The middle part of the Digimon movie Our War Game was the section with Diaboromon hijacking the internet and where we ultimately got the debut of Omnimon. That story had a direct follow-up where Diaboromon returned a handful of years later and the original Digimon cast worked together with the season 2 kids to stop Diaboromon again. For years, before Digimon Try and Last Evolution Kizuna came along, Revenge of Diaboromon was the final adventure in the Digimon Adventure timeline, and today I want to talk about this little film. Revenge of Diaboromon isn't even a case of an anime that never left Japan. No, this film had an English dub version where the vast majority of the cast reprised their roles for what they thought at the time would be the grand finale. Revenge of Diaboromon skipped theaters and was a TV special that premiered in 2005, nearly four years after Zero Two ended and roughly two years after Digimon Frontier ended. The dub came together after the company who held the Digimon license realized sometime around 2005 that they had access to a handful of Digimon films from Japan that never had been dubbed, they would go on to release four Digimon short films from Zero Two, Tamers, and Frontier throughout 2005, making big TV events out of each of them, starting with Revenge of Diaboromon, which originally released in Japan four years prior in March of 2001. So with the history lesson out of the way, it's time to discuss and review Digimon Adventure Zero Two Revenge of Diaboromon. The English language version strangely uses the Digimon Frontier theme in the opening credits. Frontier was the most recent Digimon season at the time, and its song was essentially the latest Digimon theme. I kind of like hearing it in the context of a Zero Two story, I have no complaints. Countless Kuramon, those baby jelly Digimon that would later become Diaboromon, are back online and they are sending pictures of Tai, Matt, and the others to kids all around the world. Immediately it feels like we're jumping back into the world established in our war game, with the emphasis on early 2000s tech, kids engaging with email and the internet. We even get Davis running by the same wall of screens we saw Sora wander by in the prior film. Diaboromon is back. We get a brief but sufficient explanation from Izzy explaining some of of his data must have remained after the battle and multiplied. The majority of the adventure cast is here, everyone minus Joe, Mimi, and Sora. Two things I love about this scene and the film in general. One, off the bat, this is a direct follow-up to another anime film. This was so incredibly rare if you, like me, grew up watching the Pokemon movies, the Dragon Ball Z short films, the Inuyasha films, where the events always kind of fit in the timeline but weren't quite canon and were never mentioned again. It's so great to watch a movie that counts and confirms the other movie you liked counted too. Second, the character designs in Revenge of Diaboromon are some of the best. Everyone in this scene looks so cool. The fashion is on point. Everyone looks just a tiny bit older than the last time we saw them, and you get the sense that time has really passed in this world. Unlike Diaboromon's last attack, which took place exclusively inside the internet, this film flips the script by making it so that when people open up the Kuramon emails, the Digimon pops out of your screen and into the real world. The Zero Two team is tasked with staying in the real world Tokyo and gathering up the Kuramon, while the upperclassmen Tai and Matt will go back into the internet to find and stop Diaboromon a second time. The misadventures around Tokyo with Davis and Ken, TK and Cody, Yoli and Kari are really fun check-ins with these characters. In particular, it's incredible to see Ken happy, making jokes with Davis, and generally at peace with himself. These are characters who have completed their arcs, and it's such a great victory lap for fans of the anime. Not to mention Tokyo itself is beautifully depicted in the film. There are stunning shots of Tokyo in the year 2003. It's making me feel nostalgic for a place I definitely didn't live in during that period of time. Before we go any further into the film, the sponsor of today's video wanted to say hello. Zen and TCG is a one-stop shop for merchandise and collectibles from Digimon and tons of other anime. The site is run by true Digimon fans who really legit care about the series. Zen and TCG is my first choice whenever I'm in the market for new Digimon figures, toys, vital bracelets. Anytime they reach out about a collaboration, I'm so excited mainly just to find out what new items they're stoked about having in stock. This time, they want me to tell you about a bunch of new vital bracelet accessories that are available through them, specifically the Bee Memory Special Selection Volume 2 Holy Wings and Forest Guardians, the Bee Memory Digimon Seekers Ryudamon and Doramon, the Bee Memory Digimon Seekers Lugamon plus Digimon Linker Band Restock for all of you at there who want to cosplay our boy AG. And lastly, the Asia exclusive Digimon keychains, the super cute blind boxes featuring the adventure rookie Digimon. Like I said, Zen and TCG is a site for Digimon fans run by Digimon fans, and that's why it's my favorite shop online for Digimon merch. So head to Zen and TCG, poke around, follow them on social media, maybe on threads, who knows, and tell them I said hi. The link to the site is in the description of this video. Tai and Matt find Diaboromon to have a battle that is very similar to the first one that played out in the year 2000. They do something really cool though by having the in-universe citizens of Tokyo both witness the battle on screens across town and comment on how familiar it all looks. Quote, just from some kid, oh yeah, it's that huge battle from a few years ago with those Digimon. I wonder why they're showing it again. At least in the dub, even the kids in Tokyo remember the events of our war game, which I think is so interesting. Eventually, TK and Kari join their brothers online and it's great seeing the teenage TK and Kari character models in the internet space Hosoda created 
needed for our war game. Omnimon defeats Diaboramon again, but at the exact moment, Kurumon began just pouring out of the internet, and worse, Omnimon and the internet squad are trapped online. Mimi arrives at this point in the movie, joining Izzy at HQ, and their dynamic here is so much fun. I wouldn't call what's happening flirting here, but the way these two interact, it kind of makes the Izzy Mimi crush thing that the writers went for in Digimon Try make a bit more sense. Thousands of Kurumon are now not only in the real world Tokyo, but they're all gathering at a single location, the harbor, with the intention to merge and reform into Diaboramon in the real world. The merging Kurumon form a Digi Egg in the Sky that's reminiscent of the egg Paramon came out of in Digimon Adventure, the first short film that started everything, but what emerges is not Diaboramon, instead it's a horrifying new evolution Armageddon. It fuses some of the design aesthetic from Diaboramon with the more spidery Infermon from earlier in this monster's evolution line. Omnimon breaks out of the internet, it's not very clear how he does it, but he's here for a pretty cool fight with Armageddon. The sight of a giant mech fighting a disgusting monster in a Japanese cityscape is the most Evangelion that Digimon has ever been, and I'm incredibly here for it. The first ever movie with the Greymon versus Paramon fight, that was Digimon doing a kaiju battle. This is Digimon doing Ava. Cody and Yoli are there, along with hundreds of kids witnessing the monster's birth, but Davis and Ken are late to the party. They race there, Davis is exhausted, Ken is able to encourage Davis by speaking his language, which is to say, playfully roasting him, saying, at this rate, you'll never be able to steal the soccer ball from me. Again, I adore the writing of Ken in this movie. The film is such a rewarding treat for fans of these characters, who are now at their most confident, kindest, and most unified. Our war game saw that team broken up, which was kind of the whole point of the film, but Revenge of Diabormon is a fun look at both generations of Digidestin operating as a unified team, and it rules. Just when Davis and Ken are starting to believe they won't make it, Joe shows up with a bicycle for them to borrow. It's a small role in the film, but Joe fans aren't left hanging. He has a hero moment here, which is more than he had in our war game where he was tied up writing his exam. Back at the scene of the battle, we see Omnimon take a massive hit, and both his arms fall off, which is incredibly metal and still incredibly Ava. Davis and Ken finally arrive and are cheered on by a sea of kids. They summon Imperial Dramon, and its dragon mode first goes after Armageddon. It diversifies the combat in the film just a little bit, so it's not just a man-shaped Digimon fighting a giant spider. Here, it's a dragon versus a giant spider for a bit until Imperial Dramon goes into fighter mode. Sora does finally show up, and it's great to have her on location, but unfortunately, she can't really offer much. Imperial Dramon still lacks the power to put down Armageddon for good until the two arms of Omnimon rise from the ground, glowing before the pieces of Omnimon transform into the Omni Sword and float directly in front of Imperial Dramon fighter mode. The moment Imperial Dramon touches the blade, the Digimon is bathed in light, his black metals become white and gold, and his wings go from red to this angel white. I feel the power of everyone. That's what Imperial Dramon Paladin mode proclaims, with all of the Digidestin now on site surrounding him. We get a few really great shots that mirror the Omnimon versus Diabormon climax from our war game, only now it's Davis standing in for Ty, Ken for Matt, and Imperial Dramon Paladin mode for Omnimon. Upon impaling Armageddon, Kurumon start to break apart and seem to be trying to escape. Cody, Yoli, and the others lead all of the kids witnessing the battle in capturing Kurumon and using their cell phones as makeshift digivices. It's pretty incredible to see all of the local kids working with the Digidest and using their phones like their magic to put down the enemy. It's not as powerful a moment as all the kids' emails empowering and creating Omnimon in the first movie, but it's nice. There's something to be said about the idea that our war game showcases the power of community online, and Revenge of Diabormon is showcasing local community coming together in a physical space. After that, admittedly the movie wraps up a little too fast for my liking. The Kuramon are bested, Armageddon is toast, the sun rises, which is beautiful, then Davis and Ken say a little joke about a morning jog, and the credits start rolling. I would have liked a little more time to breathe and have the entire team interact once more, since this was the last Digimon Adventure story fans got before 2015's Adventure Try, a whole 10 years later, but it's only a 28 minute film and there was so much love and respect for both the 1999 Digidestin and the Zero Two team that I can't complain too much that they wrap things up quickly. Revenge of Diabormon is not on the level of our war game, just to be clear. To this day, I think the middle section of the Digimon movie is the perfect Digimon story. It was such a great premise that Hasoda took that concept, removed the Digimon IP, and told the story again as Summer Wars years later. But still, acknowledging it isn't as good as the movie it's a direct follow-up to, I still believe Revenge of Diabormon is my second favorite of the adventure films, including Kizuna and the Six Tri movies. I like those movies more than the average fan, I think, but I really adore Revenge of Diabormon. As I've said a few times over, it's a total love letter to the original adventure cast and was a perfect goodbye back in 2005 if you were able to watch it. Let me know, what are your thoughts on Revenge of Diabormon? Do you remember watching it when it premiered on TV? Did you watch it online years later? Or did you only hear of it today because of this video? Let me know if you want me to talk the Tamers or Frontier movies. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.